Am I running my business on water? Even if it's water, I have to buy water. I'm always ready for the next best thing. Especially when I have been briefed on the reality and the cost of that thing. The body language of my of my tailors, actually, I do. There are times I'm sh I'm, I'm showing the tailor a certain style or design, and, <laughs> and then they tell us that okay, you know. <laughs> I can tell that you will not believe. You may try, you may mean well, but I can tell. So immediately I change it. <laughs> uh, hey guys, remember I told you that we are going to have a chit chat with a client. She's going to be coming from a client perspective to so let us know how customers think what are they expecting from us as tailors how do we make them happy how do we keep them hooked <laughs> so that they do not go outside looking for new tailors you know so here with me i have this beautiful damsel oh my god look how gorgeous she looks and guys she's wearing a pendra number okay i'm going to show you the full look of this dress before the end of the chit chat right so let me allow her introduce herself to you hello everyone it's a pleasure oh my god to be on this platform um my name is afyong ikanem i am um, hmm today i'm sitting here as a client um but i wear several um hats <laughs> i wear several hats which let me not go into but just consider me a client today <laughs> i am a fashion lover it's, it's just that uh, some of us, it's our many other commitments that make us not to spend too much <laughs> on clothes. But yeah, I love clothes and I'm happy to be here and I'll give my sincere response to all the questions. Stay tuned. <laughs> So Afyong, allow me to let you know properly introduce you guys to Afyong. Afyong, this is a Pendra Light community. <laughs> Pendra Light community, yeah? Yeah, they are made up of fashion designers, tailors, fashion lovers, even those who are learning how to sew, they are all here. Mm -hmm. They are from all around the world, mostly Nigerians. Then we have people from the United States, Canada, Australia, Japan, other African countries, South Africa, Zimbabwe, all around the it's world. Yeah, it's a global platform. So yes, Afyong, you've gone global. <laughs> so guys, you heard her. She said she is a fashion lover. And guys, it's true. She loves fashion. Anytime this madam comes into my store, she wants to buy everything. She wants to go away with everything. Then some of it too, she wants it to be free. Jara. <laughs> she loves fashion, as you can see, you know. She's very classy, you know. I as, as her fashion designer, her tailor, I know what she likes. She likes simple, classy, elegant. She likes to look rich without being loud, you know. <laughs> She sabi fashion designer. <laughs> okay, guys. So, Afio, like we said, you're here coming from the client perspective, yeah. right? We want to know what is it that you require from us when you come in as a client to place your bespoke order, right? Yeah. You want to make your ashwebi or anything bespoke tailored. What is it that you expect your tailor to do? Okay, the first thing um, for me is warmth. Yeah, I want to feel, I want to feel like as a fashion designer, you accept me. Because the moment I walk in there, I believe a fashion designer is already checking out my body structure, checking out a lot of other things, maybe trying to get a sense of my style and all that. So I want you to embrace what you have seen. Embrace that structure by how warm you would be, how welcoming you'll be. Yeah, and um, the second thing is um, communication. Smoothness in communication is key because I want to know that you understand what I'm saying. You can relate. In fact, if anything, I want you to surpass the fact that you understand. I want you to so understand that you have gone ahead of me to start, you know, giving me maybe your own ideas are just you know, bombastic ideas that are in line already, yeah, with 
and that's what Pendra does very well seriously very very well she's so good at that one that's why you're most likely to buy her an entire store <laughs> you're most likely to buy the entire store seriously so i i want i want the fashion the first thing what i want is for the designer to be warmed whoever is receiving me be warm you don't want to put up an attitude because that already builds a wall and makes me feel and then second is i want to un i want to know that you understand what i'm saying whatever i'm trying to tell you i want you to decode me fast seriously yeah i want you to be able to decode me fast decode my personality decode what um i like you understand though i'll be saying some of these things but you should be able to pick it quick and to be able to translate it to the kind of style the kind of clothes color and all that, that i want so i think these two are key for me personally when i walk into um, a fashion house okay she has said so much but guys who does not know if you don't know know now communication is important that's where it starts from if you miss communication that's it you cannot satisfy that customer if the customer is trying to communicate her style is trying to tell you silhouettes that she feels flatters her i have so many customers of young who are kind of insecure they get money yeah. the whole bar but they are insecure about the certain body. parts of yeah. their body even when i look at them i don't see anything wrong with them but as soon as they come in and they express to me that look i'm insecure about my arms i take notes you have to take notes. That's not the time to start designing what to show arms and, you know, force it on them that you must wear the cloth because it's fine. Yeah. Because uh, Beyonce is showing her hand or uh, Rita Dominic is showing her hand. So you too, you must. If a client has told you about the insecurities she has, you know, I know you, you, you might want to work on it, like encourage them, play, you know, let them know that, oh, embrace your body, embrace how you look, this is how God has made you to be and all that. But, you know, at the meantime, please, give the client what she'll be confident to wear, right? So thank you very much, Afion, for, you know, bringing that up. Very, very important. That's the most important thing. Now, Afion, I also want to ask you something. Now, when you come for bespoke services, right, um, as, as you know, there are some customers, I know, right, guys, let me say this. Afyong does not only sew with me. If you don't know that one, if you are a tailor that feels that all your customers must sew only with you, my dear, open your eyes and open your ears. They sew with so many other people, right? I'm aware that Afyong comes to me for some kind of services because I'm not here to provide, render every kind of service. Not every tailor or fashion designer is <laughs> rendering every service, right? She comes to me for things that I am good at and things I am ready to offer, you know? She knows my price point already and the days where she knows say she know hoba, she know go come. <laughs> the days where she knows say, ah, Benjra, I'm coming for you, I know say she knows what to expect. Now, Afion, yeah. there are some tailors and fashion designers that do not feel comfortable. In fact, let me just say this. Afion needed some clothes. I took her to another person's store to buy those clothes. Why? Because number one, the person was offering what she wanted and number two, at the price point she wanted. I sent her to a friend of mine who was going to satisfy her. That's how much I understand that. Oh, no, no be only me go chop. I'm not, I'm not here to provide everything. How, how do you feel when you go to some of these other tailors, you know, who you patronize or fashion houses who you um, patronize and they say things like, oh, I saw you wear Pendra. Or I saw you, you did not come to me, ma. What did I do? How do you feel, you know, when you hear them sound like they don't want you to go anywhere else? It has to be only them. Even when they, are, they cannot render the services you seek elsewhere. Yeah. Um, many times, I mean, I'm just... I'm just short of words <laughs> when i come to your store and you know i'm trying to tell you what i want and then instead of focusing on that and satisfying me as your client and all of that and being glad you know to just render your service and you, you just stop everything to now tell me that you know i saw with this person or or you ask me a question like why didn't you go to so, so person i know you used to uh, you know friends with her 
It has happened to me before. Yeah, I'm telling you. Did you quarrel? <laughs> or I don't quarrel when you come my shop today. I'm telling you, it has happened to me before several times. You know, and many times I, I'm just always short of words. And I hate that I have to explain myself. Exactly. I hate it so much. I'm like, why should I explain myself to you? My choice, my money, <laughs> you know? so but it's it's not a nice feeling at all it's not a nice feeling um for me personally i've just learned to ignore i've just learned to ignore but it's not a nice feeling and if i have my way i could just avoid you because i feel like you know that's really petty and maybe the next time i go again you'll be like mm, you don't come okay oh you know and sometimes you can't have a smooth conversation communication with them because they feel you pay so much at the other place. Now you're coming to crunch my price or now you're coming to prize me, you know, like we talk over here. So it's not nice. Please, if you're a fashion designer, you do it. It's so wrong. So, so wrong. It's petty. The more, you know, just receive your customer. I mean, everybody is somebody's customer somewhere. It's The world is going around. Come on now. I mean, today on the red carpet, you see a certain celebrity wearing, you know, you know how they do it on red carpets. Oh, what are you wearing today? I'm wearing this. I'm wearing that. Mm -hmm. So you can't say, ah, maybe um, um, Gucci or D and G will say, ah, so so celebrity, you wore me to this red carpet. Why are you now? Why didn't you wear me again this other time or something? So, I mean, that's it. It's business. The world. There are many people. Many people. If one person leaves you or two, many others will come to you. So you don't need to be petty about it. So half young, they say Nigerian tailors and disappointment now five and six. <laughs> Nigerian tailors would stain your white. They would disappoint you, you know. Do you still think that that is true? There are lots of new fashion houses, you know. Do you still, have you experienced, I know I don't disappoint. Pendra is a no disappointment zone and everybody knows, yeah. So do you still experience this with other fashion houses? Have there been an improvement? Are Nigerian tailors still disappointing? um yeah yeah of course um i've heard and i have experienced it at least in my whole lifetime but i think when i look at it it depends on who you go to to sew for you really it depends also on the time there are some people who bring their clothes just the night before or two or few days before there are some other factors that influence the fact that your tailor may disappoint you and then sometimes it's just clear. You went to Instagram and found one, <laughs> you know, and you did not measure it up with the capacity. Oh, if it, okay. As in, if it's that one, that's why I have different tailors for different stuff, actually. You know, and depending also on my financial capability at that time. You know, you, I, think, I think we share the blame a bit on this whole disappointing thing even though <laughs> some tailors are on another level but um i think there's an improvement and these factors like i've mentioned you know they also contribute so it's just for you to sit with yourself and wait you know you so you know, once you know there's sometimes people who say but i asked her oh i asked him he said he can sew it he said he would deliver hmm I know there's the asking part for assurance or something, but use your own wisdom. Seriously. And I read the body language of my of my tailors, actually. I do. There are times I'm, sh I'm, I'm showing the tailor a certain style or design, and, <laughs> and then the tailor starts, okay, you know, <laughs> I can tell that you will not believe, you may try, you may mean well, but I can tell. So immediately I change it. <laughs> but some people will see that and still pull through and then say, hey, Nigerian Taylor's is a point. But I, so I think, I think you just have to weigh factors. I know that it has reduced drastically now. I, it has really reduced um, because the competition is high. You don't want a bad name for your brand and all that. So, yeah. So, guys. There's this thing that we have noticed as tailors. In fact, most Nigerian vendors have noticed this. Every customer is traveling tomorrow. I'm traveling tomorrow. Have you guys noticed it? I'm traveling tomorrow. The wedding is tomorrow. The party is tomorrow. You know? Have you guys noticed it? So now that we have a client here, I want to ask her, 
do you lie to your tailor do you lie to your tailor so that they will you know deliver your cloth promptly is there a reason is there a need to lie to your tailor hmm. i think at this point this is a table <laughs> that i don't want to be responsible for shattering because i think at this point i'm representing all clients and they are just watching me like don't don't, <laughs> don't give us out don't sell us out don't you know um <laughs> i don't like my tailor no i don't <laughs> i don't so like i said i have several tailors for different um purposes and all of that so i don't lie you know i usually um i know the calculations like for example th there must be fitting you know and then maybe i have to still give myself time to come and pick up that garment before the day I, and then probably iron it and make sure there are no stains everything is perfect before the day of the event itself so i usually factor all of those things when i meet my tailor i actually do factor all of them when i mean and i kind of don't really like when tailors say when do you want to use it i think you should just ask me when when do you want to pick it up or when do you want it yes just tell me when do you want when, when you're like when do you want to use it even we the clients we cringe like so that you will disappoint me <laughs> so that you'll keep it you know so that you keep it you know in your store or your shop for long telling yourself okay she said she wants it end of end of and time time waits for no one so before you know it that that time the till i'm um, sorry the client had told you is upon you you know so i wouldn't say we lie clients don't lie i think tailors should just make sure they 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 miss up to expectations but don't don't put us on that that um that table of when when do you want to wear it or when do, no no just tell us when do you want it don't ask me when the occasion is because many times from a client's perspective i cringe within me like sugar sugar and if i tell her now that you know there's still two weeks or three weeks you know to the event she may just keep it somewhere and do it last minute or something so i think that's the experience for clients Fion, i want afyong to tell me you know briefly what are the, the the qualities that you see in your tailors that make you go back to them over and over again mm. what are the qualities you see in your tailor that you know you can't leave them you can't leave them i know we are not perfect sometimes in rendering our services we hurt our clients you know but what is that thing that will make you forgive your tailor forgive your fashion design and keep going back to her over and over again yeah i love this question yeah so um i had mentioned this before but one of it is warmth the fact that you're welcoming yeah you know people some tailors right from the door begin to look down on their customers or clients who, who walk in and that's the the first mistake you will make the biggest mistake you make many people who are it don't really look like it many times that's the biggest mistake you make so i want to know that as i'm walking in you welcome me you consider me to be a human being i don't know what your different um kada or st um, status is but i just want you to welcome me and know that this is someone that can buy is willing to buy <clears throat> um the second thing is communication what makes us come back is the fact that we just love that that tailor gets us seriously i just love that she gets me i don't do too much talking she gets or he gets you know i don't have to really break down because it can be stressful so maybe when you're thinking of coming back again you remember the experience of how i was just trying to explain to her a line skirt and <laughs> i'm telling you a line skirt and she found it very difficult to get what i meant so um that uh, another thing is the finishing the work what makes us come back again is the fact that you know when we the last time you you sewed for us we saw perfect beautiful work the cloth was neat the outcome was neat it was good it was just what we had told you we needed you know it's what as a client i told you i wanted and when i wear it it just sits on my body you know and all of that even though the, you know normally there, there's there's a fitting 
so i love when also the tailor in the process of all of that is patient is willing to work with the client and understand the perspective of the client sometimes last minute changes because we look at instagram a lot and think that style will fit our body so <clears throat> thinking of those kind of experience and uh, make me come back that you did your work well you finished it well um i think also delivery time of delivery um if i have all, all my experience with you is that i must come and sit at your shop and be waiting like this <laughs> check it by time because it's almost time for the event i will not feel confident coming back or whenever I come back, you have a story. Emma, did you give us that lace? <laughs> Is this blue lace your own? <laughs> Is this from the one? <laughs> That one, that one is always so funny. Like it's when the client come that you're asking the client, "Ma, which material is your own? Is see. it this blue or the red? Or if you're chatting via WhatsApp, Emma, sorry, send me the picture again of the material so that I can start looking for it to cut it line." No, 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 no. Your clients will not have confidence in you. Yeah. So, um, in summary, Afyong has stressed that you must be welcoming, you must communicate clearly and finishing the fit of the garment is very important and she also added that you must be patient during the process while working with them because just like she said some customers see this dress looking lovely on instagram you know when our bbl our babes <laughs> Uh, Instagram bodies, you know, wear these dresses, you know, that some of these clients don't consider that body shape is not the same. So when the cloth is, you know, when they come for their first fitting, you have to let them understand that, look, we need, we might need to make certain changes because this does not quite suit your body type. This silhouette to flatter you better, you know, especially if the client was not open to changing the style or altering the silhouette during your consultation before yeah. the garment was produced. So this is very important. Now, Fiong, I want to ask you one important question because most of my mentees, you know, I'm a fashion business mentor. I have a number of people who share their wahalas with me and we sit together brainstorm and we provide solution to their fashion business problems and i noticed that most of them care so much about aesthetics their shop must be fine they spend the capital that they do not have they don't even put aside something for marketing you know but they want to spend a million on renovating their store and put a thousand lights and make the place look like is some um, expensive you know like yeah. really beautiful which is not a problem you know but i want to know does it matter to you as a customer does it matter how expensive the store look how expensive the showroom look does it matter how beautiful the, the building looks you know generally i mean like from your drive in or your walk in does it really matter is that what makes you want to besides the things you mentioned you know yeah. is is that what makes you want to go back to that store over and over again okay um i think as you were just asking me the question and i put myself in that shoes i realized that the fact that your shop your fashion house um looks good is beautiful it's comfortable as a client, you know, everything was on point. I felt good about the place. Maybe what attracts me, it doesn't mean that's what's going to keep me. Okay. It doesn't mean that's what's going to keep me at all. What will keep me where those things are enumerated? For real. For real. And that's why a lot of people, you know, they, they, they strive so hard, just as you said, they, they scrape all the money they have to put these things together, which is not bad. It's good. But I think in your scale of priority, you should make sure you have that skill. You have put everything in place to actually represent um, that, that brand, that reputation that you're putting for, forward, really. You know, so you don't want a case where you look all of that, you're big, you're making noise, which is not bad, but the actual skill... The delivery and giving the customer the satisfaction you lack people will go back and spread this and so you'll be big for nothing i'm telling you many times you'll be big for nothing so you see big stores but they are empty or big stores and they really have patronage but one small place somewhere it reminds me of the fact that i'm sewing a certain outfit he's a men men's tailor but i'm sewing it with him he's a young man a student in school and all of that but he is good you're so in a, a men's a, yeah immense wear not for myself for someone else 
he is so good glory like he's good but his place is one very tiny many times i think that the one time i brought this client to him he had to come to her to the client's location to take his measurements and all of that because i know that my clients will not really be comfortable this person i was bringing to him will not really be comfortable there and all of that but why did i still make sure it must be him he's not the only men tailor, you know there are other tailors with very comfortable fashion houses and you know um, reception areas and all that but i went back because i know if it's for the delivery he will give me you know so many and then <clears throat> sorry this same guy now would grow right he would be there all the time he will grow and he will still have that fine shop that ac that everything so i think young people and those coming up in whatever business it cuts across try to focus on what really matters first when that matters you have a lot of people coming in income point in and then you can expand you can grow and you'd have all those things that you want okay so i have some newbies here for you who are still working from home you know now we are talking about shop is the shop fine or not fine you know how is the aesthetics of the shop but what if it is not a shop what if it is their house okay. are you going to be comfortable to go meet your tailor in her house that is she works from home will you be comfortable with that some of you guys know i work from home right not because i cannot rent a store in fact i started out my business in a shop right i had a shop outside of the house but when i got married started making babies i found it really challenging you know carrying my my business and you know running my home together it was really difficult especially with very young babies with small babies my kids are still toddlers you know so it's not been easy so i just thought you know what why don't i just shut down and go and work from home get a bigger house you know and work from home now the plan is not for my customers to really know i work from home because i have the space for me i have the space right they are not supposed to know but somehow they can just figure it out do you understand when they are sitting waiting for their fitting and stuff they can just figure these things out so i want to know from a customer perspective is there a problem with patronizing a tailor who works from home would you not want to go there like let's say this tailor you talked about now you know you know he's good you have known him that he can deliver now and then he tells you oh i have moved my production to the house you know would you want to go there or you would not want to continue business with him anymore just because he works from home um no i don't think i'll discontinue business because someone works from home um if you work from home try to make sure you've created a space for your clients that's it anyway i, I don't think i want to come to your shop and i'll be jumping pots and stove i'm serious or just as glory has said she has toddlers and i come and you've just kept the diapers on the floor no matter how much i understand that you're a mother and all that i will not be comfortable i will feel like the baby's poop is on my clothes or the baby's puke, puke is has splashed you know so if you if you're working from home please create a space create a space which you keep neat you make it you make that space purely for your clients purely for the business sake and if that's the matter if that's it uh, <laughs> if that's it there's no problem so long as you know someone can assess where you are because there are other factors accessibility general accessibility as to maybe your location or the road to your place there may be all those other factors may that may hinder your clients but if all those things are in check if you are good people will follow you seriously people will follow you i know people who have even moved to other states and people are still using them <laughs> you know now <laughs> to other states people are still staying from calabar here to other close to them and then amend <laughs> no that tells you how good and how trusted you can build your um yes trust what you can build your brand and people will still follow you wherever you go <laughs> so afio let's talk about price let's talk about price you know because this is one headache tailors have they tell me all the time my customers don't want to pay my price my customers don't want to pay me what i ask them to pay and because i want to stay in business i find myself you know shortchanging myself i find myself not being profitable because i want to make my customers happy now let me ask you afio 
when you go to your tailor bespoke mostly because we know that you know bespoke comes with is not the prices are not fixed based on the cuts based on the accessories you know the price would definitely change when your custom when your tailors give you their price do you accept the price or do you come with your own mindset of what you think the price should be i really want to know because i've also experienced this where um tailors customers come to me they show me vicky james outfits they want it beaded they want premium appliques attached to this outfit and when you give them a price they are like oh i thought it would be fifteen thousand. you know i want to know do you also have a price in mind and when this price differs from what your tailors gives to you how do you adjust <clears throat> i don't know if i've structured this question well but my fellow designers and my fellow tailors you know if i haven't structured the question well please let me know in the comment section Ask me clearly what you would want to know from your your clients, you know, about pricing. Okay, but Afyon, please try to answer this question. Um, when it comes to price, to be sincere, I think from a speaking from a client's perspective, sometimes we don't even know what is involved in that style. <laughs> we have no knowledge all we are seeing is the fine style sitting on the human you know our screenshots we usually do all we are seeing is the fine style the dress and everything you know sitting on the person we don't really know what we don't we don't even know how technical it is really we don't know how technical the style is we don't know um how much just as she said the applique um trimmings other materials use the lace and all that and we just screenshot this and say we want it i want the sleeves that way i want the bodies this way i want it that, that way so we don't really know what's involved so um for fashion designers out there speaking from a client's perspective many times we don't even know the implication of the style that is why we can bring a client can bring a style and and says is it not <laughs> is it not fifty thousand? Just as you said, <laughs> you know, is it not five? Is it not ten thousand? Are you not going to just? Yeah. You hear that a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Are you not going to just? We are speaking from our ignorance, okay? So, um, as a as a designer or as a tailor, you should be patient with your client. You have to be patient, and you have to find a way to to let us know what is involved in that. Don't be rude, no, because. We don't know. Some of us are coming from ignorance many times, so because you are the one who is just like coming to a doctor and saying, it's not just because the pain is here. From a medical perspective, you don't know what has really or what is really going on in your body and all that. So be patient and find a way because some tailors are rude. Ah, now Vicky James, you won't price me ten thousand. You you they crazy. <laughs> Am I running my business on water? Even if it's water, I have to buy water. So you need to be patient. You need to explain to us the implication of that style. You need to explain to us the cost. And you can also tell us the next best thing. I am someone that is quite disciplined you know, in terms of my budget, what I have. That's why I know my lane very well. <laughs> there are some things I'm like, ah, because of how technical this style is and the event i have before it has to be penzra that shows it you understand well there's a way it could be casual i'll just say how much is even in my pocket let me just go to to so person who i know her technicality too can you know do that so um be patient and you can always tell us the next best thing me i'm always ready for the next best thing especially when i have been briefed on the reality and the cost of that thing you know, if I didn't know before, the next best thing. So as a tailor, you can tell them the next best thing. You can improvise, find ways to improvise. When you hear the budget, when you hear how much the client has, find a way to still... In fact, like I said, communication is key. From the way the, the client is communicating, you can tell what, what is really ticking this person in this clothes. You can tell and still try to make sure that element is in this your improvisation. If not... You understand so there are ways to go about this thing there are some people who want they show you their style you tell them their, their price they don't even they don't negotiate they just pay you 
and they're, they're like i just need pensra all i need is you know the 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 clothes i need it as fine as that i need and i need it on time and all that so for pricing that's it and <clears throat> I think I've answered the question, have I? Just just make sure you're not mean. Don't be rude. Try to improvise. And there's nothing wrong to anyway in being clear that you can't make this for this price. And clients, let me talk to clients, please. <laughs> don't take things personal. I don't know. Some clients take it personal. And there's nothing wrong in having a budget. Uh-uh. You will now vex and pack your 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 this thing and be mumbling on the streets and then you go and spread the bad name. Hey, yeah. this this so, so, so brand. Hey, I never go to how she's very expensive. You forget that it was Vicky James you snapped. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. I in fact there's one of my styles because she's my tailor and all of that. There's one style I gave her. I knew I even told her I know. Don't look at me. <laughs> at the person they don't look at the figure wearing it don't also look like i this is just what i like about it and try to replicate it for me according to my budget so clients please also know how to be to be vocal like speak you know and there's nothing wrong with having your budget don't vex don't beef don't take it personal and also help yourself sometimes by knowing tailors they are tailors and they are tailors that's just the truth there are some tailors that, even if it's the same fuel, the same lights, everything, but their prices will still be high because maybe their rent for their shop is in millions or something. So just know where you're going. Maybe just the location. We, we are a, a fashion house in Lekki or a fashion house in... Uh, uh, you can't go and we're rising. So just sabi body and respect yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much, Afion. Thank you. Okay, so um, I have another question, Afyong. Okay. Afyong buys ready to wear. She buys ready to wear from me, and I think she patronizes other brands as well. Now, something happened recently. A client bought um, a dress from me, one of my best sellers. It's called the Lomasi dress, okay? And I have this dress in several colors, right? And uh, this client bought this dress a long time ago. So she decided to wear the dress recently for one of her um, important, for an important event in her life, you know? and while she was there receiving her award and stuff you know she came down from the stage and somebody ran to her shouting pens rao pens rao and she was like i don't know this lady even though yes i'm wearing pens rao. and the lady walked up to her and was like um i have this dress you know same color Pendra has done this dress too much you know and the lady was like okay where is this going to why are you discussing this with me and that's all she said and walked away you know so this client reached out to me i was like oh see what see how this person embarrassed me you know i know that i bought ready to wear from you and it's very possible that you made more than one mm -hmm. it's not mass produced if you make two pieces if you make three pieces it's not mass produced if you even have four pieces and guys let me tell you for that particular dress i don't even use the same lace for everyone in fact, I didn't know the dress would go viral like that. I didn't know it would be a bestseller. So I did not stock enough of a particular lace, you know? So what I do is, when once you inquire, I'll ask you what color, and then I go to the market and buy a lace that suits. Do you understand? I didn't produce a lot of it down, okay? So that particular dress, it is just three of them, three in this town that have it. I've stopped producing it, by the way. Just three people in this town have it, you know. So somehow she bumped into the other two met themselves. The other one has even left Calabar. She's not in Calabar anymore. She can visit, but she's not in Calabar anymore. And that the third person demanded for a, a bit of a change. She's a bit conservative, so we had to make her length maxi, yeah. while the other two dresses are medium, you know. So I I was embarrassed. I'm like, doesn't this woman know she bought ready to wear, like? Don't other designers produce two, three, four pieces of an outfit? So I want to talk to you as a client. How do you feel when you buy a dress ready to wear? And like, you know me to some extent. You know that I will not mass produce. But somehow you bump into someone wearing the same dress. Not that they wore the same dress at the same time. Yeah. The other woman just saw her and knows that, oh, I have yeah. this dress. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, so I, I want to know from a client's perspective, what do you expect of us as fashion designers? Do you expect us to make just one 
one piece one design exclusive to you yet you want to come and pay you know chicken money for exclusivity i want to know what are you cool with wearing the same dress with two or three other people or you want it strictly exclusive to you okay um first of all what that lady did not cool not cool at all like i would never do that i don't think there yeah, are many times um i see online some celebrities wearing some very high, high end brands. yeah brands and the same thing and all of that but they are so proud <laughs> They are so proud to be in fact we screenshot it and say wow who wore it best you know and all of that because behind our minds we know you know the bar say you where they talk you fit for them that kind of thing so what whoever that person is what you did not cool like don't do it again or in any other situation don't do it it's it's not nice at all so as a client when it comes to ready to wear know that it's ready to wear sometimes even on the rack i can see another another um the same this thing but another piece probably for a different size you know we have different sizes 8 10 some are 14 and all of that i can see a different size so when i'm going for ready to wear i have that in my mind that it's ready to wear and if i like that cloth i go for the one in my size you understand mm -hmm. so i mean you should know that as a client so i go for the one in my side and i rock it so nicely because i know i'm wearing pants right? i'm serious and i'm like if you can wear go go to and buy your own you understand so i feel if you are someone who who feels that you don't want to wear what someone else somewhere besides you know just like you said it's not even mass it's not mass it's not mass like that seriously because i've been to all these other stores and the rest and i see how they produce these things you know so it's not mass but if you feel because actually there's nothing wrong as a client for you to say to, for it there's nothing wrong as a client to to have your preference to have what you want you understand so if for example you're coming you see the style you see the print or something and you feel you want it but you don't subscribe to that it's very simple you don't need to grumble you don't need to go about spreading don't bad buy. you don't buy it don't buy. or you order your personal like your own custom made which of course will not be at the same price which will not be exactly it cannot be that's what i'm saying so it's just for you to cut your coat so you don't want to say don't do this thing for everybody only for me when you now say only for you that's bespoke that's custom you understand then you should be ready to pay for that so as a client you're saying that when you buy ready to wear your mind is made up that you can bump into somebody else wearing it and that's fine yes as a client i'm aware like I said, even on the rack, I'm seeing other pieces. I've I've bought, uh, I just recently bought some clothes, and on the rack, I saw other pieces in other sizes. So as a client, I'm I'm motivated by what? Maybe the design, maybe the print, maybe something, and I I weigh all of that and tell myself I still want this clothes. I'm not bothered. And even if I see somebody that wear it, which it has happened, not even in bespoke, this thing that happened before, like it was a clothes which my dad just gave me. I sold it and I saw someone else, like what are the odds? I saw someone else in school back then when I was in university. She wore the same thing, like, the and the same style. <laughs> Who turned out to be my bestie? Osake? Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> exactly. I was like, what are the odds? Like, I didn't go. Let me make people understand. I didn't even go to a shop ready to say to ready to wear. My dad gifted me the material. I now went to Taylor, chose my style and my everything. Only for me to see someone. I've never met this girl in my whole life. I didn't know her from anywhere. Oh, it, that was the first time. You yes, that was the first time. It was not an Ashebio. It wasn't anything. So that's to tell you, even this print, let's even come to our Nigerian print. This, for example, is in the market. 
look at the so what will you say you will contact the pro, the producers or something and say never make this blue um you know so it's 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 unreasonable to feel that way you know so that's how i met osake seriously and that's how we became friends up to today and what are the odds then how much were you <laughs> i went to buy ready, ready to wear and all that but i think i'm sorry designers to should be open to um receiving the individual's preferences just like you said there was a lady who needed maxi midi another person felt she, she couldn't show her arms so she needed yeah so there could always be those tweaks and if maybe you even outrightly don't want that print that same print you, you could use another one or you want to also make some major you can you know and all of that so it doesn't it doesn't call for bad mouthing and slander that was really petty by that person really petty and embarrassing for the lady who yes. was wearing that night. you weren't even wearing it at the time right no she wasn't you wearing weren't it. even wearing it she so just why? wanted to let her know that i have this dress uh, and the next thing you went on to say in I, fact i, I want to believe that that person maybe has a personal beef with that person no they are no friends she doesn't they don't even her. know they don't know she just saw her shouted benjra oh benjra oh and she was like, ah. and so what is what was that person's expectation? Sorry, that you have never sewn that outfit for anybody else. She's aware, it's ready to wear. Before exactly. she placed her order, she saw it on the rack. Exactly. She's aware. So it I wasn't don't... her personal style and her material. You know, it's like, hey, do it like this. No, so no. Uh, she was ready to wear. Yeah. She saw it on the rack, got red for herself. Mm -hmm. This other lady saw it online and ordered for red for herself. The third lady, there are only three reds out there. The third red is the maxi one, right? Every other one had been in other colors. Yeah. And it's not even quite mm -hmm. the same fabric, the same lace, mm -hmm. you know? I had to make changes because, like I said, I did not stock the lace enough because I didn't know it was something that people would want to buy a lot of, you know? Yeah, another thing is what you like. Somebody out there likes it. It happens to me even it, with a cloth or a material that was mine, the fabric was mine and everything. But that style you're screenshotting on Instagram, somebody else is screen. I'm telling you, there was a girl I recently saw online. She had sewn a certain style that I have in my phone as I've, that I have screenshotted to sew. So, <laughs> I mean, so don't think it's only you. Okay, it's so good to know that some clients know that when they come to buy ready to yeah. wear, that somebody else might have bought the same look especially if the, your your tailor or your fashion designer is not promising you exclusivity yeah. you know and so you uh, ask for it yeah so, even if you asked if i you you came to see something on the rack right if you want it exclusively made for you pay a premium and let's make yeah, something pay, just exactly. for you uh, we can yeah. even go to dubai and make your own fabric go to china and print your own fabric just for you mm -hmm. queen of africa uh -uh. We are here to serve you. What is it again that I'm doing in this life? It's the so cloth for you. <laughs> Fiong, let us know in conclusion. I know I've said in conclusion before. <laughs> this time in conclusion, right? Is there any more questions? Oh, yes. Yes, guys. We can have another segment. You know, we can have another sit and talk with the clients, you know, just to know what clients expect from us. So, yes, please send in your questions. Drop questions in the comment section. I would have another segment. Maybe not with Afyong. Maybe with another clients, you know, where we can answer some of those questions you have. So, Penzralites, thank you so much for watching this video up until this point. Don't forget to leave your questions. I'm going to have another segment with somebody else, maybe not Afyong. So, thank you and thank you. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with other fashion designers and tailors who would find this very helpful. Bye!